Hello there everyone and thank you for rejoining me here in TNO, the last of Europe, which you probably are enjoying me, but whatever. In which we're playing as everyone's favorite president, named Romney. Probably George Romney. Probably not Mitt Romney. Hmm. Mittens. Anyways, the inauguration of Georgie. The familiar tune of Amazing Grace washed over the podium. George Wilkin Romney, American patriot, Christian father, son, now soon to be president, ascended the hollow steps so many of his forebears had walked before. The gleaming incandescent rays of sunlight seemed to sweep over the stadium, melting the cheering masses into one, and aside his colleagues and compatriots of the Republican Democrats to his front respectively seated of neutral looking members of the MPP, progressive leader Henry Jackson and national Schlafy, the latter looking slightly more enthusiastic. Discordant voices seemed to sound from the sides, protesters obviously, a mixed group of disgruntled students, some bearing posters for the fallen leader of Bukharin, or wrongfully blaming him for what happened to King. Thankfully they were a small group and he paid him no heed. With a small smile. In those eyes, Grace crowd one final time before he placed his hand on the copy of the Book of Mormon. Gratefully, uh, grateful to the Lord for this day before it's beginning to speak. My fellow Americans, today is a day for all of us by which the grace of God I have been granted to serve this great nation and be served and leader of the people of this country just as Christ served us as all. His voice was drawn by an enthusiastic roar. And he stood himself for the challenges to come and for the Florida trials he must face. Yet like no, he would rather it. The Romney Presidency. Hallelujah, George Romney has won the presidency of the United States has been inaugurated. Brings experience from both the Michigan Governor's Mansion and the halls of the American Motor Companies, of course. Uh... This change is sure to be a departure from the DC's business as usual approach. With innovative and out of the box solutions to America's problems, poverty and stagnation are sure to be defeated. If this administration's successful will rely on close cooperation with both within party members as well as the business community and nonprofits. It will not be a smooth and easy path forward. It's, it's very rough, very rarely it is, but with Romney at the helm of the country, America's future is sure to be bright indeed. Film the government. President Romney understands that hiring decisions are decisive in institution success. He has chosen his cabinet with great care, hiring carefully capable and qualified individuals. By bringing aboard the best and brightest, both within and without the public sector, we shall guarantee the smooth function of the state. By and large, the Senate has accepted President Romney's appointments. With little opposition is a prerogative of the executive, however. The greatest fight is yet to come. Ever brought, the, man, the President's choice for Attorney General on African American faces high in scrutiny and bigoted opposition from the National Caucus of the MPP within the Senate. Utilizing your skills as a slot leader, we shall ensure his nomination overcomes these potential barriers. George Romney inaugurated as the President of the United States. The former, he's the former head of the American Motors and Governor of Michigan. I was sworn in as President of the U.S. today amid a watchful crowd. President Romney vowed her honor inspired by American civil society to place faith in individual and voluntary cooperation and provide leadership that merits the confidence of the people. Romney's background in government and business com complements his belief in a balanced prescription of public and private solutions. With critics from both political extremes, it remains to be seen whether the new president will be able to hold the center ground. Also, right now, we are still trying to get the, the treaty ports back, so we'll see what happens, because I was doing that before um, Romney was elected. As you can see, we have a lot of progressive support, and I'll be honest here, I had to use a crap ton of cons commands to get Romney here, and to get, get basically be guaranteed that we can get Romney. So right now, we have uh, 29 Republicans and 29 Democrats in the Senate, 34 progressive, and then uh, 6 national, so the Nationalist Party's kind of dead. But, from a message from uh, Robert Kennedy to his successor, Mr. Romney. I leave the White House greatly encouraged by your election. At every city I visited around the country, I've seen many passionate, idealistic Americans waiting uh, for your presidency. The close cooperation between government and industry that you have promoted seems to be a sensible approach to many issues we face. Provide is managed responsibly in accordance with the principles of democratic governance. Also, if you learn about the Japanese responsibilities, go right ahead. I have no illusions that your job will be easy. However, I hope that a few years from now you'll be able to look back with pride on our mutual efforts to promote the common interests on uh, issues such as civil rights, economic inclusion, foreign policy, and internal security. It's a great yearning in this country for decisive actions on all fronts. <clears throat> um, on all these matters, I would advise you to take inspiration from my own presidency in this regard. I appreciate very much your dedication to public service, and I'm open to meeting with you to discuss matters further should you feel that prudent. Godspeed, a wistful smile, and hopes of a better tomorrow. Cool. And the time's looking okay. And in America here, we don't believe in poverty. We have less than 5% poverty. That's not bad. Uh, agreement reached. But we're going that place. Great, too. A big step. George Romney. Feeling the weight of all the world after his victory in the 1972 presidential election, a smile as a family gathered around him. They all knew what he wanted to speak about. It had been on their minds since the networks had called for the rest of Romney. His two daughters, Lynn and Jane, and the two sons, George and Willard, looked up to him from the couch. Lenore's wife stood behind him, her arms embracing the four shoulders. I don't think I expected to get to this point. But we did, and this is a big step, George began. It'll be nothing like when I was governor. The house, the, the step up from the Michigan governor's mansion to the White House is immense. And the eyes of the entire nation will be out on all of us. We're to live up to those standards. He met the steady eyes of his children, all adults and familiar with political life. They knew the stakes and requirements. You have big shoes to fill, George Lenore said, clearly proud of her husband. You'll be sitting in the same chair as Washington and Lincoln did, guiding the nation forward and solving problems. Despite the challenge, I know you make us all proud. 
and one has one. George and his family embrace him, and for a moment, the world seemed a little less heavy. Thank you, dear, he said. Genuinely grateful to have his wife's support. He could struggle on despite many obstacles, but Lenore's support was foundational to his every effort. I'm blessed to be surrounded by such a loving family. Even the family embraced, solemnity persisted. They all recognized that George had become something more than a man or a father with his election now, however. They celebrated their father's victory. The beginning of something new. A matter of more necessity. Right in the private sector. Around the liberals. America's future. Me the Cornell. Learning from past successes. Sicking Brooks on him. Dixie Crap. Oh. Moral necessity. Civil rights. We're in the private sector. Um, well, we just finished J... Not JFK. RFK. And he did, we did pretty well on everything else, so... Private hunger be dressed. Not only by government, but highlighted individual experiences, huh? Hmm... America's future. Bolster education funding, huh? Best solution. Hmm. Sick and broke on him. Well, we could learn from the past successes. I kind of want to go with ready for the private sector. The past few decades have taught us that while the government can do plenty of good, its reach is ultimately limited and at times hugely inefficient. If America's problems are to be solved, then the best approach is to cooperate one private must on collaboration between the public sector, individuals, private enterprise, and nonprofit organizations. Thus, President Rowan is beginning his plans for the independent sector. Volunteer Association of Helpers. With the independent sector operating, issues like poverty and hunger will be addressed not only by government and bureaucrats, but to educate highly and ex highly experienced individuals from the non governmental world with different approaches and skill sets. By attacking these crises from multiple angles with a multitude of methods, success for Rowan's and general will be much more likely. Treaty Port Return, huh? And if you're here, you're going to that, please go ahead. Nice. Trend more Republican, huh? Can we get a lot of support over our victory? <laughs> you bet we will. As we do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Peace conference. Wait, who went to war? Oh, it might have been Russia. Yeah. The USSR is back, baby. When's the change? One more proposition. Get rid of that. Please go ahead. And let's go ahead and, uh, well, this one too, I guess. Essential ambassador, huh? Right in the private sector. Meeting with Cornelia. Essential ambassador first. George Romney was settling into the White House, finding it at times historically asphyxiating. How could one think clearly in the presidency of the eyes of Lincoln, Jefferson, and Washington and watching? It was certainly be an adjustment, but Romney meant to do good work and not let the transition difficulties slow him down. One of the first items of the agenda was a meeting with Don Rumsfeld. Rumsfeld had a solid career in the House of Representatives and his keen eye assessing flaws and America's military machine that some would have preferred to say hit him. More than that, he was a good manager and a good judge of people someone Romney could rely on. There were certain members of the RD coalition, such as Goldwater and his allies, but the president who he could not effectively reach, and that the roads where Rumsfeld came in. You want me to be your ambassador to the conservatives, Mr. President? Rumsfeld looked surprised. Or well, certainly a man of the right. He did, consider himself one of, uh, he did not consider himself one of Goldwater's cohorts. More than that, Rumsfeld, Romney replied, his eyes keen, bright, with energy. A man of all his life, he knew exactly what someone like Rumsfeld could do for him. Conservatives like you a lot more. Uh, like you a lot more than me, so if I need him, you'll be the one making the appeal. I can't be everyone or know everything, he said, meaning the subordinate's eyes, and I need men I can trust to be loyal. Where I can't, and uh, go where I can, and figure out problems I don't have to, I don't have time to get a handle on. That sounds like you. You're very kind, Mr. President. I'll be happy to serve the nation however it leads me. Rumsfeld became a uh, no-no. Meeting with Cornell. Richard Cornell is a complicated man. He was one of the first modern libertarians until his views became more complex. Now he's a leading voice for the capacity of the volunteer associations. To drive social change, he's also one of the biggest influences of President George Romney. The President admires Cornell's vision of society, skepticism of government, and optimism about the capability of private organizations um, to drive social progress. His voice will be influential in, in the years to come as President Romney grapples with the issues facing America. Uh, George P. Schultz entered the Oval Office as if there was any other room. Princeton, the Marines, MIT, Eisenhower's Council of Economic Advisors, and a deanship at the University of Chicago each had left their mark on the man, rendering him a consummate Washington insider and excellent ally to have. Mr. Schultz, thank you for coming, Romney said, shaking the man's hand. I believe you know why I asked you here. I'll be willing to offer you a position as Secretary of the Treasury if you take it. I think we both can do great things for this country together. Then I have to ask, Mr. President, what would you have your Treasury Department doing? I'll follow orders with a T, but I'd like to know what I'm getting into before I agree to jump. This was a negotiation, just like any Georgian face of business, and as always, he knew he was failing to. Fiscal responsibility, cost-saving measures, Romney said, seeing growing interest in Schultz. The man liked to bear budgets down, a passion that the President respected and the country needed. Romney's programs would be expensive and did not want any superfluous or wasteful spending. Making sure 
My taxpayers gain full bank for his buck, Schultz said, nodding. That's something the country can benefit from. I'm your man, Mr. President. Smile at Romney's brother, shake the man's hand. Schultz will not be controversial in the Senate, but knowing that many of its occupants are good to expect to say out of information. Please, another small victory for the man in administration. Romney turned to his nest task, get a long day ahead. A man suited the green eye shades work. A man for all seasons. A union of steel. Stalin's vision of Russia still lives on. Land of steel. One of George Romney's favorite aspects of politics was the people he brought him into contact with. He had learned uh, long ago that he did not have all the answers, but consulting enough with the right people, he could get a lot closer to the truth. Edward Brooke, the first black governor of Massachusetts, was one such man Romney relied on, which was what he had brought to the governor to the Oval Office today. And where I want you to be my attorney general. I am so unreliable, good hearted, and who will use the powers of the office to make this country better and fairer. I can't think of a better candidate than you, given your experience. Hardly given to flattery, Romney spoke from the heart as he had long admired Brooks for his principled approach to politics. Appreciate the offer, Mr. President, but I have a duty to my constituents, the Commonwealth. Governor Brooks seemed pained even as he declined. He was still an ambitious man, after all. I could have had a much more direct effect on the world from the office of AG than Boston. I understand that, Dad, and I appreciate your concern for the people of Massachusetts. We're lucky to have you in office. I don't think there's anyone else who can do this job like you would, or have your unique perspective. Putting his hands up and surrender, Brooks smiled and chuckled. All right, Mr. President, enough, enough. You want me over, sir. If you'll have me, then the Senate approves. It'd be my honor to serve in your administration. Their business done, the two men chatted amiably, a warm familiarity between them, a new attorney general and friend. Legal withdrawals, oh boy. Further divided. Uh, if you wanted about this, please go ahead, oh boy. Senatorial roadblock. Mr. President Romney, uh, has selected the most concerning candidate for Attorney General, Sen uh, Senator Strom Thurmond, said the reporters. Surrounded by his allies in the MPP, Senator Brooke is neither qualified nor temperamentally suited for such a powerful office. His personal conflicts and prioritization of politics over the proper and impartial administration of justice compelled a no vote for me. Another part of the Senate building, Sen uh, Senator Barry Goldwater, was given a similar statement to reporters. I share Senator Brooks' commitment to justice and the law. However, I, I have grave concerns over his views of federal power. The Constitution shackles the federal government from overextending his powers. Would that be good for real? If I'm not convinced that Senator Brooks understands these limitations, I don't believe he's a good, suitable candidate for the position. In the Oval Office, news of Senators' opposition to Brooks' nomination rolled in. Some were upset a friend of theirs had not been selected. A few like Goldwater philosophical concerns. Others like Thurman recognized Brooks as an opponent to their entire program, and quite a few would never tolerate a black attorney general. George Romney was a pleasant man, not to, not to give in to anger or big business. When he began calling Senators their friends and allies, it was not a thunder and lightning he brought, but friendliness and persuasion. A lot of politics and business had given him innumerable strings of pull and favors of straight. As the calls wore on, the charm offensive continued. Romney could see in his mind that the no and undecided vote switching over to support Brooke. Anything for a friend in need. Congratulations, Attorney General Brooks. Romney said in peace of Lisa shook his friend's hand. Brooke, a broad smile on his face, was still not quite used to the new title. Out of the trouble in the Senate, he had half expected his nomination to stagnate, or perhaps even be dr drawn, withdrawn. A lesser man than George Romney wanted to back down from an easy fight with the Senate, not wanted to burn bridges he might have crossed over later, but he had stuck by Brooks. Now that the trouble's been dealt with, Romney said, spraying a sheep of proposals across the Rosalie desk in front of his deputy, I plan to work for the State Department of Justice to begin taking a look at. He tapped his finger on the folder labeled Anti Discrimination Measures. I think this will be a particularly productive avenue to pursue. What is a civil rights act if no one is enforcing it? Brooke nodded happily. After years in the state government, he was eager to get onto the national stage. With his full powers of the United States Department of Justice, he was sure to be able to make a major dent in crime, discrimination, and prejudice. I'd be more than happy to make such issues a priority of my office, Brooke replied. Civil rights enforcement has been a back burner issue for far too long, and I'm heartened that this administration will take, be taking it seriously. We'll face blowback and criticism from the right, though, some even within the, uh, the coalition. You let me worry about them, Matt. I'm wrong with the reply. You're focusing on your job on the hand of the peanut gallery. People see that approach is working, healing divisions, only the higher line bigots will be left opposing us and uncomfortable with that. Then I'll begin my work immediately, Mr. President. America's future. America's future is its children, the truism, banded around Washington for decades. It's finally being taken seriously as the incoming Romney administration, which will make an education a priority. Indeed, tackling education should be a bipartisan popular initiative as most politicians and Americans agree that America's schools could currently be described as lacking. Under the administration's plans, in cooperation with the state and local officials, new funding and resources will become available for new schools. Students will have new books, new schools, new teachers as class sizes shrink, and each student's potential is recognized and encouraged. In an agenda that could otherwise be described as controversial cutting edge, these education plans are solidly acceptable reforms. Meaning Mr. Seapower. George Romney frankly, frankly felt a little at ease around the hard-eyed hard -eyed military man who made up much of the United States government. His faith encouraged non-violence as he attended to stay in the more conservative politics of American soldiers. Nevertheless, as part of his eternal quest to sue this conservative allies within the coalition, today he found himself meeting retired General uh, Admiral, I mean, retired Admiral John McCain Jr., a thin, small man with small, thin man with steely eyes. The son of a decorated Admiral McCain had followed in his father's footsteps, serving in the Pacific Theater as a submarine commander. 
He had been known as an effective aggressive commander who could pioneer new techniques for a submarine warper that would be crucial in the event of another conflict with the Empire of Japan. While not a politician conservative, Hawks recognized him as Jay McCain Jr., an ally and kindred spirit. Romney was not so sure until they got on the topic of family. My son's in the Navy as well, McCain offered. Caused some trouble at the Naval Academy like his old man, but he straightened up and his superior son is a credit to my family name. Generations of service to the United States, Romney reflected, a man and family putting himself at risk of the Republic. A swell administration role was within him. Would you mind explaining a few more a points about our naval position within the Pacific Admiral, he asked. They seem to leave us vulnerable in a few places. His eyes blazing with interest, McCain leaped into a detailed analysis of the United States' position in the Pacific without any notes or preparation. Impressed, Romney was content to sit back and listen. The meeting concluded. The Admiral prepared to leave, but the President had one final question for the old sea dog. Would you be willing to serve as my Secretary of Defense, Admiral McCain? Log Cabinet. A Brahmin State. Is this like Fallout? Uh, once the shining beacon of New England's uh, Republican royalty, spoken as of the presidential timbre of gridiron dinners and Republican dinners, the sheen had faded from Henry Cabot's large stars. Breed of Republican liberalism firmly put on the back foot with the rise of the new right amidst the party's grassroots. At age 70, Lodge no one's idea of a boy wonder, but his gray hair and slowly step belly belied the experience of a man who served in the benches of England to the halls of Congress and the signing of the New York Charter. And the vast president Rumsfeld is off Romney's olive branch. To the party's burgeoning right flank, through the place and lodge of the helm of the State Department is, to, is a sop to the presidential's northeastern backers, who have furnished his candidacy with money and personnel. Absent since Lodge's father the helm of the Senate's Foreign Relations Committee during the days of Wilson, it seems the Browns of Boston returned to the helm of state. Joining them at Foggy Bottom is a host of Rockefeller allies, including the renowned Dr. Kissinger, the ex libertarian president. Dr. Cornell, thank you for coming. George Romney stood up from the resolute desk and crossed over the office to greet his visitor. Cornell's Cra craggy face softened into a smile and they sat down on the nearby couch together. They got down to business immediately. Uh, I appreciate the invitation, Mr. President, Cornell said, remaining perched at the edge of the couch and studying Romney. The good that the volunteerism could do would be much greater with the support of the federal government working hand-in-hand -hand to alleviate social ills. He was heartened to see Romney nodding along. Please call me George and I will call you Richard, Cornell nodded, and the President relaxed, an easy smile forming. I can agree more. We've tried government alleviation of social problems, and while some gains have been made, other wounds have only deepened with nothing to show for it but spent money. I think a new approach, just as you described, could help the number of Americans trapped in the pit. Two. Uh, to the specifics then, George, Cornell said with a O'Reilly grin. Corporate giving programs, as well as making every effort to encourage volunteering and social engagement, are natural first steps. But the establishment of the independent sector to bring nonprofits, businesses, and community leaders under one collect collaborative roof should be our highest priority. She spoke for about an hour as more as Cornell laid out his plans. Romney intervened uh, periodically. But the insightful question is occasionally suggesting regarding organizational structures and cost saving clearly. Inspired by some business, it was a productive encounter. Future meetings were scheduled, and Romney had a new partner in politics. A new approach to the issues. The Romney's administration and education bills make its way through Congress, so having committee meetings, roll call votes, and all other kinds of Washington horse trading and procedures seems set to pass the Congress. As to guarantee its passage and early success for the new president, the Republican Democratic coalition must be united through around the bill. When America's future and children's education is on the line, we cannot afford defections from our party senators. The cool firebrand. It's a pleasure, Mr. Cornwell. Cornwell, uh, President George Romney said as Richard took shook his hand vigorously. The former libertarian, much moderated, seems to have bounced with a nervous energy, is sat in the Oval Office. I look forward to working with you on the Presidential Council and the Independent Sector. The Independent Sector was the linchpin of Romney's new approach to politics. In George's opinion, America had been built on the back of volunteerism and private organizations. In the modern age, rather than double down a centralized federal approach to solve America's problems, Romney wanted to trust them now based on older principles. A collaboration between nonprofits, volunteer groups, and corporate giving programs could have extremely positive, far outreaching effects if the right person were in charge. Absolutely, Mr. President, Cornell replied. Granted, I think you're more than an expert on the concept of the independent sector, but I'll be the best salesman for the concept I can be. Maybe I do know more about it for now than you, Rich. Maybe I don't. Uh, I mean, I'd love to give my full attention, but the demands of this office prevent me. A good president or manager needs to know when to, delega to delegate. I don't need a salesman for this. I need a leader. You're making a good point there, Mr. President. The ex-libertarian answered, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. I appreciate the focus on problem solving rather than just repeating stale dogma. I do think you'll do a lot of good for the people who need help. Whatever you need me to do, I'll, I'm ready for it. A new perspective in the room. Only 26 billion in surplus? Come on, man. Not enough. 55.59560 billion. Nice. You're the party. 
Bright horizons. Further Roman looked around the classroom carefully, barely listening to the principals he blathered on. He noted the dirty windows, the wobbly desks, the ragged books, and the school is one of the worst in Maryland with one, only one in five of the students being able to read at a grade level and even fewer proficient in mathematics. The district served largely a poor section of the Baltimore city and lack, clearly lacked funding, of course. Uh, thank you, Principal Morris. George Romney says the man's proud came to an end. You've given me a great deal to think about, but I, and I can promise you this administration will work to make your students' futures brighter. A firm handshake terminated his visit. Back in Washington, Rahm and his cabinet immediately began delving into the issue of education reform. School's funding was uneven, depending on aid from the state and the property taxes of the surrounding community, leaving richer districts far better than off than the poor ones. That gap would have to be bridged if any kind of improvement in education was to be made. The federal government picked up the tab, the president and his cabinet decided. Uncle Sam's munificence would brighten the lives and education of innumerable children across the country in order to track the program's success and make sure money was spent properly. Federal testing and curriculum standards would follow the new federal funds. The new policy would be a political winner. Parents and teachers would both appreciate the new funds and resources. Uh, even if children in the union grumbled about the new testing standards. Well, it cost, of quite, of course, quite a fair amount. Robin knew a good investment when he sold them. New books, schools, and new approaches. MPP doesn't like it. Uh, 29, we've got more than enough. Senators, uh, progressives are like, not bad. The Democrats are like, okay. And all the Republicans are like, sure, why not? Learning from past successes. While well, once you never assume that the past results guarantee future performance, Richard Cornyn was an ex excellent resume and a strong ally for the administration. One particular bright point is the program reassuring bank loans to students for their education. The program was so successful and they caused the federal program to retrench, guaranteeing later better economic opportunity. President Romney made found just a man to trust the keys to the castle of his economic reform and the opportunity plans. And happy May, everybody! Twenty-nine billion, still not enough. Oh my goodness. On that, not much. Oh, these guys are killing each other here too. A victory for the future. This piece of legislation represents a step into the brighter future, as well as a promise to every American child that will be given the tools and education to become a productive, working, informed citizen, ready to make a positive mark on democracy and society. No longer roll books, missing desks, or overloaded class to be a barrier to educational attainment. With the flourish, President George Romney signed the American Education Modernization Act. The camera's flash and his broad smile, the first success as president, was beaming out across the country. Looking around the Oval Office and the smiling faces of senators, staff, and even the journalists, Romney felt a rush of elation. He didn't go for the entire country, far beyond what he had been able to accomplish merely as governor of Michigan. This legislation guaranteed measurable and immediate improvements to the millions of children's lives. Thanks to his bill, the United States will be a richer, safer, and stronger in the years to come as his youth grew smarter and better educated to solve the country's worst problems. He also done with a united and capable Republican Democrat coalition behind him. The party is acrimony for once not hobbling their ability to work together. This will be the first of many victories, I believe. With a strong united coalition and administration eager and able to tackle any problem from any direction, New America stood on the threshold of a new age. He felt honored to be one of the one to usher it in, and with that in mind, uh, smiled even more brightly for the cameras. A new day for education. Span one and a half billion. That, oh man, one percent more inflation. Jesus, that's pretty critical. Oh man, that really hurt a growth. Jesus. Civil rights for all. So, the civil rights laws well and good, but ensuring compli compliance with its provisions has been a real challenge for guaranteeing civil rights to non-white Americans. It ma matters little to disenfranchised voters; they have a technical right to vote. While well, the practical ability to do so remains non-existent, thanks to local resistance to federal legislation. Through continued pressure on state and local authorities, as well as ongoing litigation by the Department of Justice, America's promise of justice and freedom for all uh, may finally be given true, or proven true. To segregation, beating back the state of racism, will remain a priority for the administration, even though some say Romney should mark his victory and move on to other matters. While well, an officer's moral duty to ensure that civil rights legislation is not only passed and thoroughly forced, but those within the coalition complain all they want, for this is the one thing we cannot compromise on. A final eulogy for the Kennedy administration. Former President Robert F. Robert K. Robert F. Kennedy made his first official post White House visit appearance this evening. Joining his wife, Ethel Kennedy, and Jackie Kennedy, the showing of the musical Mass. The musical commissioned by Jackie is based on the Tridentine Mass of the Catholic Church, featuring liturgical passages sung mostly in Latin, though the Sanctus includes portions in Hebrew. Upon his entrance to the theater, Kennedy was met with a standing ovation by the audience, continuing to Kennedy to find a seat. He was visibly shaken by the performance, tearing up upon the conclusion of the show. He was invited to give a speech on the stage in which he praised the actors for the performance, commenting that he hadn't seen such a wonderful rendition of the Mass in 40 years. After leaving the theater, Kennedy made a small statement to the reporter saying that he wanted a more first official appearance, but that his wife convinced him to go. He thanked Jackie for the invitation, saying it was the best possible way to start off his new retirement. Kennedy's approval ratings remain high, and mostly amongst, amongst Democrats and progressives, who continue to praise the administration's role in combating segregation and poverty. Many African-American groups commented on the administration's great leaps in racial justice, with some backers reportedly nicknaming him the new Lincoln. 
Can his future activities are. Still mysteries, though some rumors have continued to circle on his older family's members. Ambition for the White House. A brother of peace, alas. Look at news. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Richard Cornell's cheery voice energized Romney, who knew the man would be bearing some excellent news to be elated. He leaned back in his chair, giving Cornell's full attention. After approaching some of America's corporations, Ford, IBM, DuPont, and many others, I think we have our first set of corporate partners for the independent sector. Uh, a broad smile broke across Romney's face, getting corporations to buy and have been one of the scenes of the program's major stumbling blocks, but with the participation of a few in success. And with more, with success would be sure to follow. That's excellent news, Richard, the president responded, moving to the next step of the program. Uh, did you have any thoughts about how to encourage more volunteering by citizens? Rates have been stagnant for some time now, of course. Um, indeed, Cornell said. Producing a list from his pocket. The corporate representative suggesting a program where volunteering a certain number of hours leads to paid holidays. Uh, it's also the option to publicize the program as much as possible and get America interested. Both good ideas, Romney responded, but there must be a way to get high earners, movers, and shakers in communities invested. Maybe some sort of tax credit or deduction for volunteering work or organization? Cornell nodded his pen a blur as he noted the idea and began spinning new proposals off of it. The office was a blur of activity and conversation as the two men hammered out a few proposals for the independent sector before the other there was other matters demanded the president's attention. Maybe presidential medal for extraordinary volunteer organizations? Unching American Enterprise. Hmm. America cannot hide itself away from the world. Not only does isolation about strategic threats, but also in parts of the country. Flirtations with tariffs and protectionism have been disastrous for the prosperity of America. Our detachment from the world affairs has left the cause of freedom badly winning across the planet. No more never again, says President Romney. New reciprocal treaties with the friendly countries will be signed to expand the reach of the United States and secure its influence across the globe. Furthermore, the organization for nations will be supported and rallied so that America is not alone as she marches out into the world. Freedom of commerce is a fundamental pillar of American society. President Romney will ensure that the U.S. lives up to its legacy as home of the capitalism. The capitals of, of capitalism. Economy become more decentralized by three. By three? What do you mean? Oh, is it like points over here? Fully decentralized versus fully centralized. Thirty-eight out of a possible home. Huh? Greener pastures ahead, my friends. First month's president and Romney's tenure has been smooth sailing. Congress has been cooperative. Bills aligned to the administration's agenda are clearly being spun up and made ready for the president's signature. The public are receptive as well. The Romney's popularity starting off on a strong footing. It seems that a strong sense of optimism pervades the country. While well, the manager and leader like George Romney in charge of America uh, knows that brighter days are on the horizon after a tumultuous past decade. We have trials and tribulations in our administration, but we shall stand strong against our troubles and be of good heart. Uh, for throughout our hard work and faith, we will overcome the world. So Republicans and progressives, huh? All right. And so Jessica approaches new, new order. Greener pastures ahead, my friends. I kind of figured it'd only be like one episode of presidency, but with uh, RFK's, you know, reduction of poverty, like four percent, man, less than four percent. This is not good enough. We didn't get rid of the debt. Oh, not good enough, man. Just don't ask about tax rates. But I think that's pretty much going to be it for us here. This has been one heck of a campaign. We're going from uh, Nixon to RFK for two terms to, uh, like, the first half year of modern conservatism, huh? Well, I, I, I can't comment on that. I have no idea, man. I just know this is a Mormon guy here. Um, but kind of like Bennett. But not like Bennett. He's not like that. But, uh, you know, if you enjoyed the video and the campaign, especially with George Romnold, Romnold here, and seeing uh, Cabot right here and John McCain Jr., leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.